Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to show you how I made my sit stand desk. First step here is I had my steel yard cut up the steel with some manageable portions. Then I used my bandsaw to cut it down to final length. These are going to be the legs of the desk and they're going to attach to the linear rails. And the linear rails are actually going to attach to the wall so that it glides up and down smoothly. First real step of the build is to make some C-channel out of this 1x3 steel tubing. I just snap a line with my chalk line, put a little board on there so I get a nice straight cut initially and then go at it with the angle grinder. This is a part I really didn't expect is for how much tension there is to be in the steel when you cut it out. To attach the legs to the linear rails, what I did was make a template so that I can screw some holes in the back piece of the leg, and then I'll use some M5 threaded screws to tap into the blocks that attach to the linear rails. Now that I have all my pieces cut to length and I have my holes drilled to attach the linear rails, I just lay it on the ground and tack it together. Should have done this originally before I welded it all together, but just putting some end caps in the tubing so that it's nice and flush. A grinder and some paint will make a welder what he ain't. So I have the problem with that tube won't go past the linear rail so I wouldn't be able to lower the desk on there. So I just cut out a little notch with the angle grinder and you actually won't see this at all because it'll be on the bottom of the uh, actual wooden top. So although I do my best to make it look pretty, it's not important. glide up and down easily. And again, something I should have done before, but drill some holes in the top of the leg so that I can attach it to the wooden top. What I'm doing here is using muriatic acid to take the scale off of the steel. This is really dangerous stuff, so if you do use muriatic acid, just make sure that you use it outside because it's very caustic. And then to seal the legs, I'm just using Penetrol. What I'm working on now is actually the seal that will be screwed into the wall. And then the linear rail will be screwed to this. So these are the holes that I'm drilling so that I can use wood screws to drill into a stud on the wall. to make sure that the screws sit flush with the steel. Now I need to make a piece so that my linear blocks that attach to the linear rail don't actually fall off the linear rail since it will be on the wall vertically. I cut these little U pieces out of that 1x3 tube 
and I just weld them in place. So the bottom linear rail block will sit on top of this piece. You'll see that in a minute here. I have my linear rail sitting on there. Use a little punch so I know where to drill the hole. And then I just drill a couple, two holes, one on top, one on bottom. And then I'll chamfer it and then I'll tap it here. And the reason why I'm tapping these two pieces right now is so that I can make sure that my other holes are in the exact right spot. Tap number two. I think I ended up going through like four taps in this project. M5 is just a small tap to use. Using that punch again just to make sure my holes are in the exact right spot. later. I'm making a joke here but it really did take a long time and those Irwin taps that I are using were not very good. These little tabs that I'm about to weld on here are actually for the bracket that the linear actuator will attach to. So the bottom of the linear actuator will attach to these brackets you'll see in a second and then the top of the linear actuator will sit on the bottom of the desk. One of the brackets that came with the linear actuator. I wanted to hide these brackets as much as I could, so I primed them and then just painted them flat black. Now, onto the woodworking portion. To make this desk a little more economical, I just went with some sand plywood for my top. This is three quarter inch plywood and you saw me cut the 26 by five foot wide piece and that's all the final dimensions of what my top will be. And then I cut down some other strips as well and it'll be a fake one and three quarter inches uh, thickness. So I'm mitering these so I can kind of hide the seams and then I'll just glue and nail them to the bottom. So this is an actually one and a half inches thick but it'll look like it's one and a half inches thick to the eye. Of course, unless if you're laying underneath the desk. You can see on the back side, I made it a little bit bigger and that's all gonna get trimmed off on the table saw when I go to my final dimensions. Those are some supports where the legs will actually be. And now I'm just going to cut it all down to final dimension. Sure would be nice to have a real track saw. What I'm doing now is I'm going to cut out a little piece so that the tabletop can sit as close to the wall as possible and this will go around the linear rail. So I took a few measurements and now I have the jigsaw just to cut out a majority of it and then I'll use my router with a flush trim bit um, based on a template and to make it bring it down to final dimensions. And it also puts a nice little quarter inch round in the corners so it's not so straight. Makes it look a little, 
I don't know, what do you think that looks like? These are the holes to accept the little nub, we'll call it, that goes on the top of the linear actuator. These are usually in brackets, um, I think for most applications, but just with how I'm built mine, I can use it that way. This is a hole for my stand for my computer monitor. You'll see me make it in a minute here. It'll be nice and clean, no wires. I'm just putting a thin coat of General Finishes Armor Steel. This is a really great sealer for all wood. I usually use it on hardwood, makes it look beautiful, but why not on plywood? The last part of the woodworking is I'm gonna make a little box that goes underneath the, the top, and this will hide all of my cords. It'll have a power strip in it, and all my cords will run down into that box and there will be just one cord coming out and going into the wall for power. Not exactly the safest, but it works. simple box. I didn't want to make it too fancy. And what I'm doing here is I'm just routing out a little bit of depth so that when I put hinges on the door, it sits flush on the box. And this is just the door cover. Put a little hole in there so I can open it easily. Chisel out the door so the hinges sit flush. Now to hold the door shut, since that will be vertical, what I do is drill little holes and then what I, I'm using a nail so I can mark exactly where the screw is going to go on the door. And then I use a magnet and I just pound that into the hole and then when I drill a screw into the door, it'll magnetically close itself. I ended up putting three magnets in the whole door, I think. This is the stand for my monitor. So this bottom piece here, I'm drilling a hole so that that tube can go through it. Now I'm gonna drill uh, probably too many holes so that when I screw it into the bottom of my desk, it's not going anywhere. that plate onto that tube. I'll leave the plate a little proud so that I have something really good to weld to. I'm going to cut a four inch square and then I'll drill a hole in each corner. This is actually the plate that's going to connect to the back of my monitor. There's a standard hole width, I guess, for all TVs and monitors. And if I remember correctly, this is like three and a half inches hole to hole square. You could probably buy all of this stuff on Amazon for less than it costs me to make it, but it wouldn't be as cool. 
And then what I did here, this is just two inch square tubing. I cut off one side, drilled some holes in it. I'm just gonna plug weld those holes. And then you'll see in a minute here that I weld it to some two inch tubing which fits over perfectly the one and three quarter inch tubing that the monitor stand is made out of. Now I need to drill some holes. So I test fitted all this and those holes that I'm making right there are the is for the cords to come out and to go into the back of the monitors. So I need power and HDMI to go to my computer. So the monitor power cable will go all the way through the bottom into the power strip that's in the box underneath the desk. And then this hole will be so that the HDMI cable can come out and plug into my computer. Fits perfectly. Now is final time to put it all together. So I'm screwing my brackets to the wall. Just some drywall screws. And then I'll screw my linear rails to the bracket. Slide on my linear bearing blocks. And then very awkwardly screw the leg to the linear bearing blocks. I tested this all out and it all works really well. These bearings are designed to take this kind of load. So I'm not too worried about it all breaking down someday. Attaching the top to the legs. I put little spacers so that it wasn't perfectly against the wall, but close to. And then I'm going to put my art monitor stand through the hole that I drilled in the top and then screw that into the bottom. Perfectly seamless. You can't see any of these screws. And then I'll screw the bracket into the back of the computer monitor and set it on the stand. That's all cut to the perfect height for what I needed to be at. This is the box that will conceal all the cables. I'm just putting linear actuators in, into the brackets that I built for them. I'll link a video in the description to show you how to wire all of this up. Uh, there's a really great video of a guy that built builds linear actuator desks as well. Um, his are designed a little bit differently, but that's where I learned and had inspiration. We're all done here. These linear actuators can hold up to 660 pounds combined and it takes about 45 seconds for that to rise to the top but that's not too bad because you're not putting it up and down all the time. Thanks for watching. I hope we see you in the next video.